Okay, hey guys, this is uh, topic 10.4, which is quality management. And so basically what we're trying to do is ensure consistent quality of products. So, you know, as a designer, that's something that you definitely want to do is make sure that the quality of your products is consistently, well, it's consistent, it can be consistently bad, I suppose, but it's consistent. Um, detailed manufacturing requirements are, are, are going to be developed, processes to meet requirements are developed, and then you're going to be using some systems like quality control, which, are, which is often shorted to, uh, shortened to QC, um, something called statistical process control, we'll talk about that, which is shortened to uh, SPC, and quality assurance. And this is basically all, and it goes back to the whole you know section here on, on manufacturing and kind of getting into lean manufacturing. The whole idea is that we're trying to uh, reduce potential waste, right? Okay, so let's move on. Let's start with quality control. So quality control, this is a definition from the IB, so make sure you know it. Okay, so it's the, it's the development of a system to ensure that products and services are designed and produced to meet or exceed customer requirements and expectations, right? So you're trying to meet your customer's expectations. Um, one definition of happiness has to do with this. Expectations, uh, if you are, um, if your expectations are met, generally you are happy, and if they're exceeded, you can be even happier. When your expectations are not met, that's generally where unhappiness comes in. So what we're trying to do is keep our customers happy by exceeding or meeting their um, their expectations. So one of the things that we want to do in quality control is we want to make sure that we are defined defining tolerances. So we're basically at the design stage where we're defining in, these are basically design specifications, right? Like what's the temperature of the processes? What's pressure, speed, time, those kinds of things. Um, parts that don't meet those tolerances um, need to be reworked or scrapped. So they can either be thrown away. And this is where waste comes in, right? So, but it's better to catch something um, in the manufacturing process than in the final product because less will need to be reworked or, or scrapped. Um, we want to continuously monitor machines to make sure that they are um, performing where they're meant to perform with the standard predetermined standards and qualities. And quality control at the source eliminates waste from defects as workers are responsible for the quality of the work they do. So what you're trying to do is, is trying to make sure that they are uh, eliminating waste defects by making sure that they are doing the work they're meant to be doing. And usually samples of the final products are inspected. Okay, so this is what quality control is. Okay, and one of the ways that we do this is something with called uh, Schuhart's Continual Improvement Cycle. And so this is, you know, how it goes is basically not that different than many of the other cycles that we look at, right? So, you know, it, it depends where you want to start. You can start anywhere in here, but, you know, like you're studying results, uh, you take action to standardize or improve a process, you plan how you're going to do that, you execute the plan, you check, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, just similar to many of the other cycles that we're looking at, it's essentially like a plan, do, review, right? So, um, but you're trying to work that into the entire process. Now, the GCSE has a sort of different idea about quality control. Really, I mean, this is a good video, um, and I think that it helps to explain quality control, but really what he's talking about in here is, is looking at the final product that comes out. It's essentially making sure that the final product meets the standards that you set. So have a look at this. Um, however, I think the IB is really talking about this when they're talking about quality control. So I want you to understand that there's a difference between um, the ways that some people talk about quality control and the ways that the IB is talking about quality control. Because essentially, this total quality management is essentially what they're talking about in quality control. It's checking along the process. It's understanding that your customer is actually it can be an internal customer or an external customer here with quality control they're really just talking about your external your final customer your external customer so that would be the person who's buying your product with the internal um, customer it could be the next person in line that you're giving your product to so for instance you know like let's say that I'm, I'm doing one step in a manufacturing process and then I'm passing that that finished good or that finished piece of a, of a of something to the next person. I mean, you know, let's say that we're making um, 
uh, clothes or something like that. And I'm the person who's responsible for sewing one one piece. Well, you know, if I pass that that sewed piece onto the next person, it doesn't meet the requirements. Well, then I'm not satisfying my internal customer, which would be the next person in line after after me. So total quality management, I think, is really what they're talking about here with with uh, quality control, not this quality control, although this is another definition of quality control, so you should watch both of these videos to see kind of the difference between the two. Okay, now quality assurance is also, you know, connects really tightly with the total quality management and then also with quality control. And we're talking like all activities from design to documentation. So it includes um, the regulation of raw materials, assemblies, products, components, services related to the products, and management inspection product um, processes. Okay. Um, essentially, what you're trying to do is develop systems with documentation that checks the, the quality of, of the process along the way. So this is kind of more process oriented, where these are more product oriented. So this is checking the process. This is checking the product okay and that's kind of a, a key um, key difference between the two okay and so you might be um, looking at uh, regulation of raw materials you know assemblies products and components services and and inspection processes okay um, here's a uh, quality assurance Go ahead and watch this video. He, he does a good job explaining what quality assurance is. Okay, and then this is a, a, just a helpful chart that helps you understand the the difference between the two. So quality assurance is really looking at process. It's more proactive. What you're trying to do is eliminate problems before they happen, and it's trying to prevent defects. Whereas quality control is more product oriented. So you're looking at a product and it's more reactive. You're looking at a product and you say, oh, I noticed there's a defect within this product, right? So then well, that's after it's been manufactured. So it's reactive and you're finding defects. Now preventing them, you're finding them. Now, once you've found a defect, what you would do is go back into the process and improve that. But this is more product oriented. QC is, or quality control is more product oriented. This is more process oriented. And that's the big difference between the two. And this chart really is helpful for that. Okay, then we're looking at statistical process control. So this is um, a quality control tool that uses statistical methods to ensure that the process is operating uh, in its most efficient form. Okay, so what we're doing is measuring aspects of the components to ensure that they meet required standards throughout its production. And again, we're trying to eliminate waste. And what this looks like is something like this. Okay, so you're looking at a, a chart. So you're figuring out some, um, some aspect or specification that you're measuring. And over time, you continue to measure that. And you're plotting those things and, and seeing, well, okay, you know, what, what is the, are they staying within a couple of, of tolerances? Okay, so tolerances here could be th things like the, you know, the size of something or, or um, the, you know, the amount of, uh, you know, just some specification that you might have. I'm trying to think of in food here, you know, the, the amount of cream that's in ice cream or the amount of sugar that's in a, a piece of chocolate. Like there's sometimes when you're going to have more uh, sugar in a, in a piece of chocolate. So you're going to be going up to the, the upper limit and sometimes there'll be less. So maybe you're going to the, the lower limit. But what you want to try and do is say like, well, you know, the chocolate's going to taste fine if it's anywhere between the upper limit and lower limit. If this line ever crosses over the upper limit, then the chocolate's going to be too sweet. People won't like it. If the if this goes under the lower limit, then the chocolate will be too bitter and people won't like it. So therefore, you want to make sure that it stays within these two limits and as close to the mean as possible. When things start to get away from the mean, you want to look at the process Right? And this is where the statistical process control comes in. You want to look at the process and figure out how to bring it back towards the mean. And that's the key thing is you want to keep your data points as much as possible, the specifications that you've determined, you want to keep them as much as possible close to the mean of, of whatever it is that you're measuring. Okay? So again, that can be lots of different things. It's any specification that you are, are working on. So it could be size, it could be... Um, 
you know, certain, you know, stitching. It could be sugar and chocolate. It could be anything that's that's that you're working on, and you're trying to keep it as close to the mean as possible. All right, well, that's that, and we'll go on to economic viability in the next class. Thanks.